In this lesson, we'll learn how to build our own hamburger icons using CSS, where we can easily tweak the line thickness, the gap between lines, and the animation. So let's get started building this out. So let's add in a Webflow navbar, and we'll show the menu icon on every breakpoint. We'll give this nav a class of nav wrap, and let's set its background color to transparent. For the purpose of this demo, I'll go ahead and delete the link block and also the menu, and we'll just keep the menu button here. I'll move that out of the container and give it a class of nav button. Now let's go ahead and set this menu to show for a minute. And when we do, you'll notice the menu button has an open class and we can use that to make the background transparent again. Webflow adds its own font color here. So we'll go ahead and set that font color to inherit and we can go ahead and close this menu. So now what we'll want to do is select the menu button and we'll remove all of its sort of padding here. And we can't actually apply flex to center this because Webflow is setting this button to block. So we'll need an extra div inside of here. Let's just delete this icon and we'll create an extra div. And this will be the start of our component. So we'll call it something like hamburger uh, one wrap. So this is our first hamburger uh, component. And this is where we can apply our flex to center the lines inside. Let's give this button a set width and height. I'll say something like three rim wide and tall. And this hamburger inside, uh, we'll just give this 100% width and height of its parent. And then inside that, we'll add in a div and we'll give this the class of hamburger one line. Now I'll go ahead and set this to a width of 100%. I'll set its height to 0.2 rim for now. And I'll also go ahead and give it a background color under custom of current color. So its background just matches the font color of the parent. And we can go ahead and duplicate this line. So we have two. Now we want these to stack under each other. So we'll change our flex direction here. Now I'll give this first line for now a class of is one and I'll give the second line a class of is two. And if we want these lines to directly overlap each other, what we would need to do is apply a transform to the line and we would move it down by half of its height. So its height is 0 0.2, we would move this down by 0 0.1. And then we'd select the line below it and we'd apply a transform that pushes it up by 0 0.1, so half of the line's height. And when we do that, we have perfectly centered lines and they're overlapping each other. And then all we would need to do is rotate them. Now, one thing we'll notice if we do rotate here and we say rotate to 45 degrees, watch what happens when we increase this move. It's not actually moving up and down. It's moving in the opposite direction of the rotate here. And so if we want the move to actually move it straight up and down, we would need to make sure the move is applied first and the rotate is applied second. And that way this move actually moves it straight up and down like so. So we're moving this down by half of the line height. And then we can just rotate this line the opposite way. So we'll go ahead and apply a rotate here. We wanna make sure that it happens second and we'll rotate it by negative 45 degrees like so. And so that's making our X here. Now, what happens if we were to have a gap between the two lines? Maybe we had a default gap of 0.5 rim. We'll notice that they're not really making a perfect X anymore. And that's because if we just go ahead and turn off our rotate for a minute on both of these, we'll notice that the lines, when we push them down, aren't perfectly overlapping each other anymore. So now because we have a gap, we can't just move it down by half of the line's height. We also need to move it down by half of the gap here. So if we take half of the line's height, which is 0.1, and half of the gap, which is 0.25, that would put us at 0.35. That's how far we need to push this line down, and that's how far we need to push this line up. So if we know that, we can build a more scalable system where no matter what the gap is, no matter what the line width is, these will always move down the correct amount. So let's remove the combo classes from these lines because we can just target the first and last child instead of giving them each unique classes. Let's apply a transition to all properties and I'll set this to 500 milliseconds. We can set any duration and ease we want here. Now we can copy this whole wrap to have the whole structure and code for this animation and paste it into our project. I'll put the embed right in the middle so these lines are still the first and last child. And I'll give the embed a class of hamburger one embed. And that way I can just set this to position absolute so it's not taking any space or creating any extra gaps. Now inside that embed, we'll create our open and closing style tags and we'll target this hamburger, we'll say hamburger one wrap. 
and we want to create some variables on that parent. We'll create a variable of thickness set to 0.1 rim for now, another variable of gap set to 0.8 rim, and we can use those variables on our elements. So for this line here, we want to set its height to custom, and we'll plug in that variable we just created called thickness. And we, if we select this parent, we are only interested in the row gap, and we'll create custom here, we'll plug in that variable we created called gap. So now we want to move these lines based on those two variables. So if we open our embed, we can go ahead and select this wrap here. We want to target the first child inside of it, which is that first line. And let's go ahead and apply a transform. And we want to translate Y, which is to move it up and down. And we want to use a calc to combine these two variables. So we'll plug in a calc here. And I'm going to plug in my var of thickness. And we want to take half of the line thickness, so times 0.5. And we want to add to that half of the gap. So we'll say plus var of gap, and we'll say times 0.5. So half of that gap plus half of the thickness should move that line down by the correct amount. And then if we just copy this over and we target the last child, this time we want to take uh, half of the thickness, but we also want to make it negative. And half of the gap, but we also want to make that negative. And then we'll add those two negative numbers together. And so if we save that, it moves the lines up the correct amount. And then all we need to do is rotate. So we can rotate this first one, something like 45 degrees. And let's go ahead and rotate this next one, negative 45 degrees. And that should pull them over and rotate them the right way. And we only want this to happen whenever our menu is open. So Webflow adds a class of w dash dash open to that open menu button. So whenever this hamburger wrap is inside of these open menu buttons, that's when the lines will get these styles. So if we save that and we click, we have this working and good to go. So no matter what the thickness is or no matter what the gap is on our lines, this is always going to line up in the right place. And one thing this allows us to do is live update any of these styles. So on this hamburger wrap, whenever we're hovering it, we might want to update the thickness of these lines. And if we go ahead and save that, we'll notice whenever we hover, the thickness updates and it's still keeping the X perfectly lined up. This would be really hard to do if we weren't live updating this with variables because the transform is all based on the active thickness and that thickness is being animated. So we can do this with pretty much anything. We might want to do it with rotate as well because if the lines are wider, sometimes we don't want to rotate to a perfect 45 degrees. So for now, I'll just plug in a rotate of 45. And let's just go ahead and pass in a calc here. And into that calc, we want to plug in the variable we just created called rotate, and we want to multiply it by one degree so that we're just adding the degree unit onto that. And then same thing goes here. We'll plug in a calc, and we'll pass in that variable we just created called rotate. But this time, we want to multiply it by negative one degree, so it just automatically goes the opposite of whatever we plug in here. And then whenever we hover, we could live update that rotate value to anything we want, maybe 60. And we can change it here or here. So if we go ahead and save, we'll notice that this is going to animate to either the more condensed version or it can animate to the wider version in real time. And this is the beauty of CSS and just keeping everything real time dynamic is that we're not having to define hard set start and end states. It can all be very fluid and dynamic. Now, if we only want this hover state to apply to maybe the open version, we can just copy this class and say only when we're hovering the hamburger icon inside the open state, will those styles apply? And that way this does nothing. And when we click, it opens and it does that all just fine. Sometimes we want to make the X a little bit smaller because it can feel very tall when it's rotated. So one thing we could do is plug in on the, the width of these lines, we could plug in a variable called width. And that way we can just animate their width to be smaller inside the open state. So I'll make the width variable be something like 100% by default. And whenever we're open state, we'll just animate the width to, I don't know, something like 70%. And this doesn't even have to be on hover. It could be or it could not be. It's totally up to us how we want to do that. I might just leave it like that for now so we can see it. But now we'll notice whenever we uh, hover, it's not actually scaling. It's not making the lines thinner. It's just decreasing the, the width of these lines, which is condensing it more. So we have this really nice effect there. Now we can also stylize these lines however we want. So I could create a, a class like is secondary or something on this one. And I could go ahead and set that to maybe a different width, maybe something like, I don't know, we'll say 60% here. 
And we could choose how we want to align this parent. So if we want it to be in the center or align this way or, or align to the other edge, um, I actually might go 70 here. Um, so we can really style this however we want there. And we'll want to make sure that whenever we're inside the open state here, that our line element is actually a width of 100%. So I'm not going to update this one hover, and I'm not updating a variable. I'm actually just setting the width of these lines to 100% whenever they're inside the open state. And that way, it can start off like this. And whenever we open, no matter what we set either of these lines to, they're both going to go to 100% inside the open state. And we can also update that on hover if we want it. So I could set this line to maybe 100% width by default. And I can say whenever I'm hovering, um, so let's grab this. Uh, this would probably be the closest one. So let's say whenever we're hovering this parent, this wrap, we'll grab the last child and we'll go ahead and set its width here to something like 70%. And just to make sure that this overrides, because this is more specific right now, we'll need to throw import in on here just to make sure that it goes back to 100% width whenever it's open. And so if we go ahead and save that, we'll notice this hover is applying only inside this state, but whenever we open it, no matter what, it always goes to full width. Now, right now, the right of this top line is moving down and the right of this bottom line is moving up. So these lines are collapsing towards the right, like so. Now we can reverse that if we just open this embed and set the first line to move negative and the second line to move positive. Also just remove this hover state for now. And if we save that, we'll notice now they're collapsing towards the left, like so. So now we can change this animation even more. I'm just going to go ahead and select this last line. And maybe we want this to move, I'll say rotate times one, which is what it would normally do. So the line starts flat and it slides up 45 degrees. If I say rotate times two, it'll slide up 90 degrees. And if I say rotate times three, it's going to slide up 135 degrees. So it's where the first line would normally be, but it took three rotations to get there. And for that first line, we, we don't want it to go where the bottom line is. So we'll just move this positive instead. And it's just going to slide up just a little bit from flat to 45 degrees. And so if we go ahead and check out how this works, it completely changes the feel of the animation. Instead of each line just sliding up by 45 and negative 45, this bottom line makes a big swoop. It's sliding up three rotations. And this first line just slides up a single rotation. And we could exaggerate this even more if we want. So if we head over to our embed, we could copy the rotation amount that we have on this second line and apply it as the rotation to our first line. But we're going to have this move negative three steps, so it goes the opposite way for the first line. And now we have a much more extreme animation. Now we might want the lines to slide together first and only rotate after they're finished sliding together. To do that, we use a transition delay. Just like we can have transition durations for properties like opacity and transform, we could also delay individual properties like delaying the transform to only start after opacity is finished. In this case, we want to delay rotation to only start after move is finished, but since rotation and move are all a part of transform, we can't delay those individual values. New in CSS, we can actually use rotate as its own property, but to keep things simple and use the native UI for all of our easings and durations, I'm going to only move this parent div and use a child div instead that we rotate. So I'll remove the background color from the parent. Inside the line, I'll drop in a child div with the class of inner, and I'll go ahead and apply the background color to this inner element and we'll give it 100% within height of its parent. So the parent is going to move, it's gonna slide up and down, but the child inside is what will rotate. And that way we can have our own transition duration and easing and whatever we apply here will only affect rotation. So I can copy that, I can put it inside the other line here. And now this inner element is a first and last child of this line dev here. So we want to edit our code a little bit where we're not grabbing every first child inside the line wrap, but we're only grabbing direct first children and direct last children. So we're only grabbing the line divs themselves. Now we don't want to rotate those line divs. We want to rotate the children inside them. So we'll copy this and we'll grab the direct child inside of this line div. So we're grabbing this inner element and we're going to rotate the inner element and we'll move, remove the rotation from the parent element. So let's do the same for our bottom line here. So we'll grab the direct child, which is the inner element, and we'll go ahead and apply the rotation to that. We'll remove the rotation from the line div that holds it. And if we save that, the animation will look the same, 
except that now we're rotating the inner elements inside and we're moving the parent divs. So if we copy this inner elements class, we can apply on this inner element here a transition uh, delay. So if we go ahead and set that, we know that the transition duration on this inner element is 500 milliseconds and the lines are moving down over 500 milliseconds. So I'll do 600 milliseconds here. So there's a hundred millisecond pause between the lines sliding down and the rotation starting. So if we go ahead and save that, we should notice the lines should slide down first and then the rotation happens. Now, when we close, the lines are gonna slide apart first and then the rotation will happen. The rotation is still delayed both ways and we only wanna delay the rotation whenever we're opening the animation. Otherwise, we want the rotation to be instant. So to do that, we can just copy this open class and we're only gonna apply on this inner element a transition delay when it's inside of the open class. When that open is removed, the rotation will be instant. There will be no delay. So if we go ahead and save, we should notice the delay on open and on close, we should notice the rotate happening instantly. Now we still want that rotate to happen instantly on close, but we might want to delay the lines sliding apart until the rotation is finished. So it kind of just like reverses the animation a little bit and does the opposite of what we want here. So to do that, we can go ahead and select these first tiled inside of the hamburger wrap. And let's go ahead and apply that transition uh, delay just to them no matter what. So no matter what, even if it's not open, we're gonna have a delay on the lines sliding apart. And that's not quite what we want here because nothing happens for a bit. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure we're not just selecting first children, but we want to select all children, uh, all direct children of this wrap. So we're basically on both the open and close, we're delaying the lines. So nothing happens for a bit. And then when we close the rotates instant, and then the lines slide apart. So the close is right, but we want the lines to move uh, instantly on open, and we want the delay to only be on close. So what we can do is just copy this, and we'll copy this here. So we're gonna say whenever we're inside the open, we're gonna grab those lines and we'll have zero delay. And then whenever there's no open, they will have a delay of sliding apart. So if we go ahead and save that, now our animation looks much smoother where the lines come together, then they rotate, and then they rotate, and then they come apart. And we can really just tweak this rotation a little bit because right now it's going uh, a little bit crazy. Let's keep it going to uh, right here, only one rotation amount and it'll be positive. And then for this one, we'll do only one rotation amount and it will be negative. And that way we're just simplifying how much it rotates, just making that a little more simple. And that looks good. So that's how to build and customize your own hamburger icons in Webflow. I'll leave a link to this clonable in the description below.